What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers might be in some trouble on a couple fronts. So first off, Lakers missed out on DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. It hurt, right? That's the guy that we all kind of was hoping would, would be the guy that the Lakers land. Um, I always said that I thought DeJounte Murray was a bit of a long shot. Right? I, I like the idea of getting him. I still maintain Trey is probably the most likely scenario. But sticking with Trey real quick before we move into some other stuff that is kind of concerning. Um, sticking with Trey, one of the picks that went to Atlanta was the Lakers pick next year, the 2025 uh, first. So does that make it, does that put Atlanta in a position to where they go, we can't trade Trey to the Lakers, right? Do they end up going, we A, either keep Trey or B, send him anywhere else, even if it is a slightly less package and hope that the Lakers just fall apart, which could be a scenario, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video. So that is definitely something concerning. I do think that Trey still ends up probably getting traded to Lakers if the Lakers want to make that big splash. They very well might not. But they also might not have a choice. And again, that'll tie in here in a moment. But to me, it's kind of like, yes, there is the argument that the Lakers, you know, the pick could be great. But like if the Lakers fall apart, like if LeBron and AD and everything just kind of crumbles and they end up getting hurt, you know, knock on wood or something, and they end up, you know, not making the playoffs or something, the same thing probably happens with Trey. So they might not look at it as much of a difference, right? And they kind of look at that as like, that is just an additional piece and add on. Also, Trey, what does he want to do? Right, He doesn't want to rebuild. That's why he's still most likely going to be traded because he doesn't want to wait around for a rebuild and they are clearly heading for a rebuild. Right? I mean, you just got the number one pick that you kept. You just traded for Dyson Daniels, who's a young you know, prospect that could play the two or the three. Right, You have Jalen Johnson. So they're starting to round out and carve out that their young core. Trey Young doesn't really make sense for them. And the question is, what is the cost for that? Especially with DeJounte Murray, who was said to have a bigger market, only going for two first Dyson Daniels and uh, Larry Nance Jr. That could actually be in the Lakers' favor especially if the Lakers are kind of the only team in the market to trade for Trey. You know, maybe they give up a couple pieces and then, you know, and Rui may make sense with that young roster because it's like you got Dyson Daniels, Jalen Johnson, Rui Hachimura, and then, uh, uh, you, 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 well, you got Rizisha or Rizache. Um, you also kind of have to make that work, but he could make sense for him and D'Lo could make sense for a year if D'Lo was to opt in. At least at the time of recording this video, we don't have any word of D'Lo, but that's where everything kind of ties in. The Lakers could end up not having a point guard, which is concerning, right? So right now, technically you have like Gabe Vincent and then you have Bronny James and Jalen hood Shafino. But are you really, like, what are you doing? Are you going to move Gabe Vincent into the starting unit? And then what? And then have Jalen Uchifino or Bronny James be your backup? Could the Lakers go get a Chris Paul or somebody in free agency? Sure. But they also need a center. They also need, you know, they, some, some type of 3 and D guy, right? And you're going to, and the whole idea this season with J.J. Redick is to play LeBron more off ball and to run a bunch of, like, you need a point guard that can actually make those plays. And so now what? Now are you slotting Reeves at the point? Which, if you're slotting Reeves, like, we saw that last year. Austin Reeves is not ready to be a real point guard, right? He can make a play, right? He can find the open man, find the occasional cutter, throw the occasional lob, but he's not a playmaker. He's not a guy that's out there, you know, slicing and dicing, cutting the defense, watching things develop before they develop. I mean, he gets tunnel vision a lot. Right, there's a lot of concerns. Like, if D'Lo leaves, the Lakers are now in the market for a point guard. And DeJounte Murray was kind of the hope. DeJounte Murray was the guy that we had hoped we could land, and then now we can worry about everything else, right? But now DeJounte Murray's off the table. The Lakers might not have a choice but to trade for Trey at this point, right? Because, again, who else are you going to get at the point guard? Are you moving Gabe Vincent in the starting unit? Right, Gabe Vincent, he's more of an initiator than he is a real playmaker, Right? And now what? Now you're playing LeBron primarily as a point guard? Are you going to have him worn down and wore out before we even get to the play-in at that point? Right? It's just, 
things are starting to crumble. Now, look, it is incredibly early. Incredibly early, right? We haven't even officially hit free agency. So there's still a lot that can happen. It looks a little stormy right now, but you never know. Things could end up playing out. You know, maybe the Lakers go and trade for Trey Young and, you know, pull off a minor. Maybe they will get a, I don't know, a, a Dorian Finney-Smith or something, right? Maybe they worked something out to where they could get a piece or two. Um, and then you maybe go get a Valanchunas in free agency, take a couple Flyers guys, right? Like, we could, when all is said and done and the dust settles, we could look and go, okay, the Lakers are in good shape, right? We got we got this great uh, roster, you know, you got you kind of maybe a little front end, but hey, it's fine. We got a bunch of young guys that are ready to go and play off the bench, right? Maybe give some of those guys an opportunity until you get to the playoffs, and then once you get to the playoffs, it's like, okay, let, let's cut into our, our eight, right? Because it's really all you need is like seven, eight guys. So, again, I'm not too concerned in that front, but the Lakers got a lot to figure out. And we're all kind of waiting around seeing what does D'Lo do. Now, I think D'Lo opts it. I could be completely wrong. According to reports, Brian Windhorst, um, he even thinks that D'Lo is going to opt in. I've said for basically the beginning that I think D'Lo opts in. I just don't see the market. I know teams like the Orlando Magic, and uh, there's there's been murmurs of guys. But all those other teams have D'Lo at, like, the bottom of their totem pole, right? Like, there's, like, five other guys that all these teams want before D'Lo. So is D'Lo going to opt out and run the risk of somebody else not, you know, not picking him up or something, and now now you're in trouble, right? Like, there's just a lot of questions in that regard. And so I, I just, I think he opts in, and I think that, like, you, you try to find a trade, but if that trade's not out there, you might have to keep D'Lo. You might not have a choice but to keep D'Lo. Because, again, you got to have a point guard. you got to have somebody that can initiate the offense, especially if you're going to play LeBron more off ball. So Lakers might not have – Lakers might end up being stuck with D'Lo. The other alternative is you potentially give D'Lo an inflated contract, you know, the J.J. Redick rule, which I think would be funny because – uh, J.J. Reddick's now the, the Lakers head coach. But also, you know, you've seen recently like Bruce Brown. That's how the the Indiana Pacers were able to get um, uh, Pascal Siak, right? So there may be other options, but you wouldn't be able to trade him until like December or January. So basically, you're, you're almost running it back until the trade deadline, which I don't necessarily like. I mean, obviously, if you can get some stacked roster at the trade deadline, then sure. But I, w I would rather have a roster that's locked in, ready to go. We know that, okay, this is probably our roster the whole year. And then at the trade deadline, maybe you're looking to add a minor piece. Maybe you're looking to get, you know, a little piece here or there that could potentially take you over the top, right? Like if you're close or let's say you, you're you you're up there, right? You're one of the top teams. Now you can go and just go get this guy, add him in, and now now you're ready to go. Let's go win a championship. Like that's kind of what I my hope was, going into this this playoffs or going into the season, right? And so it's just now you're looking and it's like, okay, so the Lakers missed out on DeJounte Murray. Lakers desperately need some type of trade, some type of upgrade. What are you going to get that's going to be so – like, yeah, I would love Cam Johnson. I'd love Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith. But, like, is that enough to put you over the top? I don't, I, I think it's a real step in the right direction, but I don't think that that, like now we're a top three to five roster in the league. I think we're better, right? But I don't think we're we're this super elite team and you still don't have a point guard, right? So what, are you signing Chris Paul and starting Chris Paul? Like, I like the idea of Chris Paul coming to Lakers, but not as your starter. I'm more on him being, you know, your backup playing Oh, 15 minutes a game at the most, right? When LeBron goes to the bench, he's coming in and kind of, kind of keeping things stable. That's kind of my my hope in that regard. But it's just the Lakers are in a very tough spot right now. And again, it's early. I'm going to remain positive and remain optimistic. But it is definitely something concerning, which is why I just I think that this signals even more that Dejounte or that uh, Trey Young is probably getting traded Lakers. Because the Lakers, again, they might not have a choice. They might have to go trade for Trey because it's the only way. And he might be the only, the, the best shot at us really elevating. Because if, like, if him, LeBron, and AD actually work, then you're in good shape, right? Like, if those three actually figure it out and work well together, you're going to be a good basketball team, right? And then at that point, you slot in Max Christie 
and Jared Vanderbilt have Austin Reeves off the bench, right? Because you shouldn't. I, you didn't, look at the trade for Dejounte Murray. You shouldn't have to give up Reeves to go get Trey. However, you need D'Lo. Otherwise, if D'Lo opts out, then you do have to trade Reeves, which then I don't think. Everything, again, kind of hinges on D'Angelo Russell. Because depending on how D'Lo and what happens with D'Lo kind of dictates and depends on how everything else is probably going to shape up, which sucks because we're basically kind of handcuffed right now until D'Lo comes to a decision, comes to a conclusion. It's not a fun place to be in. Right? It's not a fun spot to, to play. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll say it's uh, incredibly stressful. That's for sure. Um, now, it's frustrating, but... No, like I said, a lot can happen between now and, you know, the, the beginning of the season, right? You know, in a month we could be like, wow, okay, we're, we're good. We're back, baby. Let's get it. What does that look like? I don't know. We'll see. See how it plays out. But DeJounte Murray would have been a nice step in that right direction. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you think that, yes, like, you know, go get Trey? Do you think, no, stay away from Trey? If so, like, who do you want to go trade for? Again, it's like, who who else can you get that gives us a real shot at being a contender? You know, maybe Donovan Mitchell, you know, maybe a Darius Garland, something like that. But it's just, it's tough. But anyway, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot so we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. And that subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.